Okay, so welcome back to my channel. Okay, this is Love, Lies, and Records, Season 1, Episode 4. So, um, as you remember, last week's episode ended with Kate and Rob kind of parting on bad terms. He was actually go going back out to go to work because he and Anna, his ex who works for immigration, they are staying at the safe house to protect Laura. And so this episode starts with... Uh, Kate realizing that Rob didn't come home. So he basically worked overnight. And so she, you know, she's walking around the house calling him. And then she realizes that, oh, he, he's, he's not there. And for whatever reason, well, not really. People who do shady stuff, they tend to project that onto other people. And all of a sudden, now the other person who didn't do the, the mess uh, somehow becomes untrustworthy. And so... She's now kind of feeling insecure about their relationship. You know, she has this thing going on with uh, Rick that uh, Rob still doesn't know about. The fact that he spent the night, not spent the night, but he kind of worked overnight with his, uh, with his ex. And so she's kind of, she's feeling some kind of way. And so she tried calling him. He went to voicemail, which further kind of fed into her paranoia. And he uh, eventually, as she's talking to Jamie... Rob comes home and he was like, she's like, well, what, what happened? Where were you? And he was like, he worked, he worked all night. And she was like, why didn't you call? And he said, I did. And so she said, well, where did you leave? He said, he left a message. And he, she's like, where did you leave the message? On the house phone. He didn't call her cell phone. He called the house phone. And so she's kind of like asking him all this question. Then she starts asking him about the case. And then they realize that they found another body and you know, this, that, and the third. And so you can tell that she's kind of grilling him for information. But he's exhausted, and so eventually he decides that he's going to turn in for the day. He just he's he's done. He's worked overnight. He's tired, and so um, she notices that he, notices that he le he left his briefcase on the kitchen on the kitchen table, and there's this envelope sticking out. It's that damn envelope. She pulls it out, and it's that damn envelope that Judy sent to the police station. And so obviously, based on his reaction, he hadn't you know, pulled the, uh, actually opened the thumb drive so he doesn't know what's on there. Yeah, obviously he would have came in the house with a very different attitude. <laughs> but, so of course she sees the envelope. Of course she doesn't know until she pulls it out. I'm like, what is this? And so her and Jamie are kind of looking at the envelope. He's like, you don't think Judy would, da, da, da. It's like, we don't know. And so she goes, it's a thumb drive. They pull uh, um, Rob's laptop out of the bag, plugs the thumb drive in, and it was, in fact, the video. Of Kate and Rick. And so of course they. She's. Her and Jamie are panicking. At the same time. Lucy is walking into the kitchen. So they're trying to turn it off. Unplug the thing. So she didn't have a chance to. Uh, to delete it. So she basically had to. Kind of put everything back the way it was. Put the drive back in the. I mean, put the drive back in the envelope. And put everything back into the bag. And so now. It's on her mind like damn. Okay she had. I mean, she had the opportunity to take it, but then that would have been suspicious. Then obviously he would have been like, okay, hey, then he would have started, he, then he would have had questions about this USB drive that went missing. So that's, you can imagine how that could be weighing on her all day. So fast forward to, um, there at Jamie and Kate are walking to the office. You finally see Rick's partner and I think her name is Olivia. And so you can tell that she's kind of, she has an attitude with him. It's like, you can tell that things are not well between the two of them. And so she drops him off at work. And then he basically says that, oh, you know, she, her, her, her mother's coming into town and she's distressed and that, 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 that. And so they're like, oh, okay. This is the same day that the drunk couple is <laughs> set to renew their vow. So they're outside of the of of the office and of course Rick, Jamie and uh Kate run into them and they are three sheets to the wind. They are just a hot mess, right? And so they're like, oh, you know, they're so excited and you know they ain't already, you know, literally got the party started. It's all dressed up and you know, just look they had some sort of small conversation and then they went into the office. So as soon as they walk in for whatever reason, Judy starts talking about her night before and how she had a good time with the church girls and how they came over and had me. And it's like, bitch, don't nobody like you and nobody cares what you do outside of the office. Nobody cares, okay? Nobody cares. So, uh, Kate 
pretty much. Oh, and then uh, Jamie and was it Anna Atalia told Jamie that his wife was there, and so Jamie went out to meet his wife. But he went out dressed as Jamie, as a woman wearing a dress and the whole thing. And so he walks out and he says, they said, you wanted to see me? And she was like, no, I didn't want to, I don't want to see you. She was actually there to register her mother's death. And so this is when he finds out that his mother-in-law has passed away. And so of course he has an emotional, he's emotional because he, you know, he, he cares for her. He still cares for his wife. And it's just, it's just a bad, it's a bad situation. And so at this point, she basically tells him that, you know, her mother's death, you know, her mother left her some money and basically she was taking the boys to, to another city. I don't know if, if it's a uh, better school or whatever the case may be, but she was basically wanting to move with the boys. And of course, Jamie has obviously an emotional response because she feel, he feels like she's taking the bo his children away from him. And so there was this whole thing with him and his wife. And so we flash back to Kate. So Kate basically tells Judy that she know, like, bitch, I know you sent, uh, know what you sent to my, my, uh, my man. And of course, Judy is still like, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. And then she said the photos, the USB drive. I know, I got you. I, I know, I know, I know what you did. Now, again, it's still, at this point, nobody knows who sent the photos. Because like she said in the previous uh, episode, why would she send photos if she has actual proof of the infidelity? So, at this point, we don't know who sent the photos. Okay, so uh, Kate gets herself together. She goes in to perform the ceremony for the drunk couple. I don't even know their name. They're just drunk. Everybody, And so, I mean, they was having a party. They had the music blasting. It was just, <laughs> they was just doing the most, right? And so, uh, Kate really had to tell them, you got to turn the music down. They're like, well, what? You told us we can have music. They just so tore up. And she was like, yes, but there are other people in the next room registering dead. The res you know, the dead family members. And I was like, oh. So they turned, so they turned the music off. They got kind of situated. Jamie, obviously, is he's emotional because of the, interac the uh, interaction he had with his uh, wife about the kids, taking the kids to live somewhere else. And so he's, you know, getting herself together. Herself, she's getting herself together, sorry. And Kate is, you know, getting her, you know, getting her paperwork and all of that kind of stuff together to start the ceremony. And so she starts the ceremony and she begins to have some sort of panic attack or something. And again, it's that situation where she's done some old, she messed up stuff and now she doesn't trust Rob. Now that could be a combination of that and in the first episode she revealed that her son's father ran off with her sister. So am I saying that her, she, I don't know if she suffered from some kind of PTSD or something from that, that trauma or whatever, but you know, she's having some sort of fit, right? And so she tears out and goes home because she is just imagining him at home screwing his ex, his ex-girlfriend in their bed, in their house. I mean, she's Probably got all the stuff going on along with the fact that he still has access to the drive with the, the with the uh, evidence of her and Rick. And so she runs in the house. She runs in the bedroom. She's like looking around and like you can tell like her she's her, she, her breathing is labored. She's just going through this whole thing. And then Rob comes in. He's like, what are you doing home so early? And then she, of course she had to make something up like, oh, I'm looking for the uh, file on Amir and Christine because Amir and Christine is set to get married that day also. And so they're coordinating. So Rob and his, uh, the police is coordinating with immigration to kind of come in during the ceremony to, to take everybody into custody. And so she's like, I forgot the, uh, I forgot the file. And so he, she goes downstairs into the, into the living room and she realized that Anne is there. And so they're actually, he, she was there, but they were actually working. And so she goes down, she sees the laptop on the counter and she sees a thumb drive, a USB drive plugged into the computer. So obviously her, she starts panicking again. You can see her, her, her breathing and all of that is quickening. And she's like, oh my God, they're about to open this drive. I don't know what's on it. Even though it, it looked nothing like the drive that the footage was actually on but you know when you go into stuff you don't pay attention to those things but so she's standing there they're waiting for whatever to download and you're standing and she's about to have a fit and it wasn't it was basically some information on some criminals 
I think that are kind of related to the case that they're that they uh the Amir and Christine case. And so she kind of breathes a sigh of relief. She storm she goes back upstairs and now she's looking for his uh briefcase so she can actually get the thumb drive. So she finds that, she gets the thumb drive, right? <laughs> She storms back to the office, walks in, and slaps the shit out of Judy in front of everybody. And I say everybody, everybody. Okay, she slaps the dog shit out of Judy. And of course, she's like, oh my God, I can't believe you did that. You're going to pay for that and blah, 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 blah. And she basically said, if you if you don't stay away from my family, I'm going to F you up, basically. I mean, that's just the gist of what she said. But, and of course, she's like, I'm pressing charges and that, 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 And then, of course, Jamie is sitting there like, I don't know. I was looking at the computer. And Anna was like, I don't know. I was somewhere making tea. So, I don't know. And she was like, y'all all a bunch of liars. <laughs> it, it was just, <laughs> it's like, girl, if you only knew how much you were despised, <laughs> ain't nobody going to help you and be a witness for you. And so, she sends Todd. She was like, well, that's okay because CCTV caught it. And so, of course, they have cameras all over the place. So, she has the keys now. Hit. Girl, Captain Supervisor got the damn keys again in her pocket. And so, she has the keys to Talia and asks Talia to go to pull the footage. So, Talia goes into the um, into the room and then comes back and basically said, Oh, we don't, um, I don't know what happened. Uh, it, the CCTV was turned off and she said maybe somebody turned it off by mistake. Now, Talia is so sweet and innocent, it's kind of hard to tell if, in fact, someone did turn it off or if she went in and deleted the footage. So, and of course, Judy is just like, she's just so disgusted. Like, oh my God, you got, like, basically, y'all all make me sick. And so, they're probably looking at her like, no, bitch, you make us sick. And so, uh, after that, uh, basically, Kay and Judy are getting in, getting into it. And Judy is, of course, basically like, I don't know what you're talking about. I think that you need to take some time off. You're losing it. And da, 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 da. just trying to make, basically trying to make Kate look crazy. But she didn't already say what she needed to say. Stay away from my family or else. So, Judy and Talia uh, go to perform the same sex uh, ceremony. Okay, so Talia is all excited. You know, this is still new to her. She's a junior register, and so she's learning. And so uh, Judy is standing there, clearly uncomfortable. It was like a themed wedding, like a '50s or '60s kind of themed wedding. Everybody was dressed with the hair, you know, had the, the, these dresses on with the hair up. It was it was really cute. It was cute. And but Judy is standing there at the front, and she clearly looks uncomfortable. And you know, the brides, they walk in, they walk down, they're all excited. And, of course, they have to ask them to verify the names, this, that, and the third. And Talia sitting over the desk. I mean, it was just, everybody was in the spirit except for Judy because she really didn't want to be there in the show. And so, you know, when they perform the ceremonies, I mean, they use a lot of colorful, flowery language. And it's very, they really, you know, connect with the people. It was like Judy was reading a script. And even Talia was kind of looking to giving her the side eye like, oh, okay. So she just did like the basic of basic ceremonies. All so she can get through it and get out of there. Okay, and so that's going to come back to bite her in the ass. So she, um, so after the ceremony, they're all out taking photos. And, you know, they're all, you know, everybody's all excited and happy. And this and the third. So they asked Judy if she wanted to, you know, to come in because she officiated the ceremony. So they wanted her to take, they want to take a photo with her. And she's like, oh, I can't do it right now. It's just a photo, right? It takes half a second. But, oh, no, no, I can't do that. I have another wedding I need to get to. And she basically said, well, Talia can take the photo with you. So Talia goes over and takes the photo. And basically, Talia is left to handle the remainder of the process as far as them signing the registries and all that and verifying the name correct and all that whole situation. And so, uh, next we have Kate. Uh, you have in another room the Amir and Christine wedding. So, Kate comes in and she grabs Christine so that they can do the pre-wedding interview with she believes to be the pre-wedding interviews, but they just want to make sure that Christine understands what's going to happen um, and how everything is going to go down and how, you know, they're going to take them into custody. They're going to put her in protective custody, this, that, and the third. Okay, so she, that's all cleared, and she goes back to the room, and her name is Dom Dom Dominica, Dominica. I kept referring to her as the translator, but I think her name is Dominica, something like that. 
And so she basically is communicating her, asking her, is everything okay? Okay, you know, no, everything is good, fine, fine, fine. And so the police, you know, Amir and his cousin arrives. And so the police are already there. Immigration is already there. Everybody's in place for this whole thing to go down. But surprise, surprise, Amir and his cousin crash through the door, basically saying that I'm not going to marry that woman. She's a damn liar. She told me she was pregnant. Da, 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 da. He grabs Christine, pulls her out of the chair, pulls her shirt up, basically shows that the baby bump is fake. I mean, it was a whole situation, right? And so the police and immigration rush the office, rush the uh, room. People are getting arrested. I mean, it's just pandemonium, right? And so once everything settles down, you find that they're still at the registrar's office. And so you have Christine in one room being interviewed and Dom Dominica in another room being interviewed. And basically, Christine is basically saying, they offer me $1,000, they will give me my passport back, and I can go home. And this, that, and third. And so, of course, they go over to Dominica and basically tell her that, you know, Christine is telling us this, that, you know, A, B, C, D. And, of course, Dominica is just sitting there like, I don't know what she's talking about. Mm -mm. Nope, not us. That wasn't us. Nope, mm -mm. I don't know what you're talking about. All lies, lies. And so, um... At the end of the day, he basically said after this interview, everybody's going downtown. That's what Rob says. So Rob and Kate are walking down the hall. They kind of get into a little argument because they feel like there's a leak somewhere. They found out about the bust and, you know, they don't, they don't really know where the information came from. They just know that they had to have found out some kind of way. And so they kind of get into it. And, you know, in the end, basically... That particular thing wasn't resolved. I mean, emotions were high. Everybody was frustrated and flustered and, you know, all of that. But in the end, you know, at the end of that, basically Rob asked Kate to meet him at a specific spot later on that night. He basically asked her out on a date, right? And so, of course, she's like, oh, sure, okay. So he leaves and, of course, she starts panic. She's in panic mode again. So Rick comes over and she's like, he knows, he knows. <laughs> and Rick's like, oh my God, what? What, what? So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And she's like, I don't know. And she's, it's just this whole thing. And so, um, at, uh, shortly after that, they're back in the, uh, back office. Talia walks in and basically she realizes that she made a mistake on the registry. She misspelled one of their names. And so they're saying, wait a minute, didn't you, uh, didn't Judy check this? Cause she said, oh, I only see your signature. Kate saw the book and she said, I only see your signature on here. Where's, where's Judy's signature? And basically they realized that Judy performed the ceremony, but then left Talia to handle the rest of it. Even though she should not have, cause Talia is still in training. And so she, uh, made the mistake on the, um, with the names. And so of course Kate is just too through. She's pissed. So she finds out where Judy is and she's doing a, a birth registry. I don't know what she, what she was doing, but Kate walks in, you know, just as she was finishing up that ceremony and basically walked up to her and said, um, basically you were responsible for officiating that ceremony and making sure all of the paperwork and all of that was right. And she was like, well, she, you know, Talia has to learn at some point. And she basically had to tell her, well, you know, she made a mistake on the registry as far as the spelling. And what we're going to have to do now is have to call, we're going to have to have these people fly back to uh, London after their honeymoon to, uh, for this correction. And we're, they're going to basically have to eat the cost. So whatever they have to pay for airfare and hotels and all of that, they're going to have to cover that cost because it was their mistake. And so she basically, and, and Judy was basically like, you know, I'm just exercising my religious beliefs and this, that, and the third. And, and Kate's brother said, no, you know damn well that that's not right. You know that you can't do that legally. And that's why you've been doing everything you can to cover up the fact that you do not agree with same-sex marriages and that you don't want to perform same-sex marriages. But I'm going to report this. And basically, and she was like, and where was your Christian belief when you were blackmailing me? And she stormed out. And Judy, again, left there with her damn face cracked. I mean, Lord, I can't do count many times Judy, uh, Judy had her face cracked. Somebody telling her ass off with her foolishness. Okay, so after that was all said and done. Okay, you, it flashes to, uh, it's after work, it's after hours. And so Kate and, is Kate, Rick, Jamie and Anna, they went out that night for some drinks before she went to uh, meet with Rob. And so, they, you know, they're just talking. And of course, it just happened to be the same place that the drunk couple went to afterwards. And they still told, 
three sheets of the wind. They still, still tore up. So, <laughs> they, you know, stopped by the table for a minute and went on their way. And then eventually, uh, Jamie left. And so, Kate was basically, you know, I need to go and I need to meet Rob. And so, I then, so she gets stops outside the restaurant by Rick. And so, they have a conversation. And basically, Rick is like, I'm ready to do this. You know, I want to know how you feel about it. I've liked you. I've always, you know, cared about you. This, that, and the third. And you can tell that she has feelings for him, too. But she's like, I just, you know, I have too much to lose. I have a family, you know, whereas, you know, you have your girlfriend, which is set, but I have children to consider. And he's just like, he's just like, we can make it work. We can make it work. We can make it work. And she was like, it's not that she's like trying to explain to him. Like, it's not that simple. I can't just uproot their lives. And I don't want to be, and I don't want to have to leave them. And you know, that impact affects my relationship with my children. It's like, there's more at stake here. And so she was like, I just, and then he asked her, you know, what are you afraid of? I think, And she was like, she's afraid of being left alone. She's afraid of being alone. And basically she got, gets in the cab because she had too much to drink. So it wasn't safe for her to drive. She's, I don't want to say too much to drink, but she's had a couple of drinks. And so she decided to take a cab to meet, uh, meet Rob. But Rick decides to tag along because again, in their minds, they're thinking that, uh, Rob already knows what's going on. And he's, for, for whatever reason, he's invited her to a public place to, to beat her ass or something. I don't know what they thought was going to happen, but he decides to tag along just in case something went down. He would be there to intervene. Okay, so they get there and uh, Rob is, you know, he's at the bar and she goes to sit down. And they just, you know, having a little conversation. And still, she thinks that he's about to let her have it, right? And so they get a, get a table they eventually get a table and they sit down and they're talking. He's talking to, you know, they're just talking like couples talk. And so Rick is out in the like waiting room or some kind of lounge area. How his, well, I kind of, I figure out now I know um, how she figured out. Cause when I first saw the, first saw the scene, I was like, how the hell did she know? But then it made sense um, later on. So he's sitting there and who comes barreling down the diagonal walkway with bags, uh, bags of his shit. I think her name is Olivia, the girlfriend. So Olivia basically says, you know, she basically turns the place, that place out. Now, surprisingly, uh, Rob and Kate, they're in the restaurant part, so they don't know what's going on out in, out in the lounge area. And so she basically lets him know that she has those, she has the photographs. She showed him the same photographs that were sent to Kate. And she also has the video footage. So there wasn't anything that he could say. And she basically said that you let me know where you're staying and I'll send the rest of your stuff. Basically, it's over. She's had some, a private investigator following him for some time. So that's how she got the photos. Okay, so that's where the photos came from. The private investigator had been following them. And she got the photos and she sent the photos to, to Kate's house. So that clears up the whole issue with the photos. And so basically it flashes back to Rob and Kate. And Rob, um, after the whole conversation that they had, Rob gets down, he gets down on one knee and he officially proposes to Kate. And so that is basically where it ended. So, uh, yeah, that was a lot. <laughs> that, that was a lot. So Kate is officially engaged. Rick is officially homeless. What's going to happen next? So uh, I'm going to end this here and I will talk to you guys next week.